Price is a good reason to buy a subcompact car like the Ford Fiesta, but it's not the only reason. One of the Fiesta's major strengths is sprightly handling that make it a joy to drive around town. At the same time, the Fiesta can feel a little twitchy on the freeway. Even so, for a nimble subcompact, the ride is pretty good. Bringing Ford's subcompact to speed is a 1.6 liter four cylinder that delivers satisfactory acceleration and highway fuel economy in the mid to high 30s. An extra $1,100 swaps the standard five speed manual transmission for a six speed dual clutch automatic. Perhaps the more intriguing engine option is a turbocharged one liter three cylinder offered in the mid level SE trim. Teamed exclusively with a five speed manual, this minuscule mill develops more power than the base engine, handily tops 40 mpg on the highway, and sounds charmingly aggressive. If you're okay with manual gear changes and its $1,000 premium, the three cylinder is an enticing alternative. The Ford Fiesta is a five seater, but piling three adults in the back is an achievement. Just sitting here by myself with the front seat adjusted for my average frame, it's pretty cramped. I mean, maybe I shouldn't complain, it is a subcompact. Then again, when I'm sitting in a Honda Fit, I never feel claustrophobic. The Fit also features clever rear seats that flip up and fold flat, while the Fiesta's 60-40 split seats simply lower, creating this decidedly unflat load floor. Total hatchback cargo space is 25.4 cubic feet, with 14.9 of those cubes behind the rear seats. Choose the $300 cheaper Fiesta sedan, and you'll have a fairly roomy 12.8 cubic foot trunk to load up. It may not be the largest small car, but the Fiesta does make admirable use of soft surfaces inside. It's also quite fetching outside. I've always liked the current Fiesta shape, but a tasteful refresh in 2015 helped reinvigorate our appreciation. Boon for infotainment aficionados, the Fiesta's option sheet now includes Sync 3, which remedies previous Sync shortcomings via a 6.5-inch touchscreen sporting a simple, speedy interface. Conversely, the standard audio and phone interface is difficult, no, I'm going to say frustrating to use, with outmoded controls and a confusing menu interface. Also, as long as I'm complaining, this armrest sits too far back, this armrest sits too far forward, and the sun visor does not extend, leaving a little gap for the evil sun to blind you. I feel better. For the minimal investment of $15,000, including destination charges, you can buy a Fiesta S sedan, complete with air conditioning, keyless entry, a four-speaker audio system with two USB ports, and seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag. Work your way up through the SE and titanium trims, and you'll enjoy cruise control, leather, push-button start, automatic AC, heated front seats, and a feature commonly found in the standard equipment list these days, a backup camera. Regarding the competitors, what about them might draw you away from the Fiesta? Well, the Honda Fit is notably roomier and has better resale values. The Versa Note offers Nissan's sweet around-view monitor. The Toyota Yaris is, well, a Toyota. The Chevy Sonic has 10 airbags standard. And the Kia Rio comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Another good reason not to buy a Fiesta is because there's a far more thrilling alternative, the Fiesta ST. With a 197 horsepower turbocharged engine, a six-speed manual transmission, racy but refined style, and track-worthy handling, the Fiesta ST is a true joy to drive. Add to that hatchback practicality and a sub-$22,000 base price, and the ST might be the best Fiesta of the bunch. Amid a sea of compelling subcompacts, the Ford Fiesta is not a standout in all regards, but it is fun, stylish, and affordable. And if you're buying a small car, it's not a bad combination.